growing well, than not. Out of 110 <laughs> over, in with with a third of the the legislature turning over every uh, every two years. Okay. I mean, I, I don't think we should all be penalized for that. How much did their demeanor in the in the House play into this? Not necessarily right then, but throughout the time that they'd been there. I mean, they certainly haven't made a whole lot of friends. Well, they were very, uh, they were a very different crew when they, right out of day one. Uh, I mean, literally the, the day we got sworn in, I mean, there, the controversy over the seating the assignment. Seating, yeah. And then the controversy over Courser's uh, furniture. He, he took it all apart and threw it out in the hallway. Um, and then <laughs> the um, contract for liberty. The yeah. contract for liberty, and then Gamrat responds to the sec state of the state. Yeah, the liberty. Yeah, the yeah, about that rule. one. The Hastert rule. Uh, the abortion bills that not even right to life even wanted. Uh, they didn't even see it. They they, they didn't even approve of it. Um, and then of course Cindy's uh, uh, Facebook posts in the middle of a uh, uh, a closed caucus uh, budget uh, budget thing. Were they guilty of not going along to get along? They came in with a, 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 a chip on their shoulder. Uh, well, you know what? They came in with an agenda that that I think in their in their mind they were not they were neither Republican nor Democrat. I, I don't what, know if you call it Liberty or Tea Party or Libertarian, but they saw themselves as the the David versus Goliath, and the rest of us were the Goliath. Well, do you think that they thought they would have some support from people like Gary Glenn or maybe Lee Chatfield or Aaron Miller, these people, and that they could be a bigger group than they turned out to be? At one point, they said they were going to influence the speaker's vote. Right. Well, I saw firsthand. I had the bill, House Bill 4006, uh, which was the uh, so-called uh, Kelsey Smith bill, allowing law enforcement to ping uh, your cell phone. Uh, they were able very effectively to, to get a coalition of about uh, 20, 20 uh, Republicans opposed to it. Tell the story about that. He, <laughs> he was in committee, um, and tell, tell, tell us of how that, uh, that, that vote went down, because he, he had an amendment, yeah. and then he voted for the bill, yeah. and then he didn't vote for it on the floor. Well, I had this bill, Kelsey Smith, House Bill 4006, and I've explained it. It pings your cell phone. It doesn't read your text messages. It doesn't eavesdrop or anything like that. It basically uses your cell phone as a, a primitive GPS in case you're lost or you're disabled or you might have uh, Alzheimer's or, or something like that. It's, it's, a, it's a great bill. Um, I, something like 25 other states already have it. It's, I, I didn't think it as a big deal. I thought of it as a, a quick easy bill to get out of committee right off the bat, okay? And um, uh, everything was cooking along real well. Todd looked at it and he started to have concerns that this was Big Brother and it was NSA spying and stuff like that. Okay, I mean, I figured I'll, I'll work with you on that. So we had an amendment. I wasn't always thrilled with it, but if, it, if we could get the bill through the, through the committee, I thought that would be a good idea. Turns out that even though he had some opposition to it, he ended up voting for it. And I thought, well, that's that's great. You know, the system works. I got an amendment. He gave, you know, I got an amendment out of him, and now he's playing ball. This is this is terrific. <laughs> then I find out. Then about two days later, he takes to Facebook, of course, and uh, he calls this an Orwellian bill, and it's the uh, the end of the world. Did he give you a heads up? No. Of course not. <laughs> and uh, so I, I, I you you were on an elevator after the vote, and apparently yeah. said something in front of Zach Warshell that yeah. uh, you're getting him on the board. See, or yeah, I think it's working. You know, he's he's playing along. And um, <laughs> so then I got I got whacked on Facebook, of course, by on, on this whole thing. And I was an evil monster, and we were going to wiretap everybody. And um, you know, I I was I was uh, disappointed, but I wasn't out to you know get even or anything like that. I just thought it was a freshman mistake. It was actually probably the first vote uh, on, a, on a bill that he had ever cast. So I thought, yeah, okay, look, maybe he, maybe he just goofed up. Uh, but then it was, um, but then it became a rally, a rallying cry for him and, and Gamrat to try to kill this bill. And uh, they both uh, were able to get other members uh, fired up. The Dean's accused you guys, the committee, of scripting the committee, okay, which uh, the chairman vehemently denied. Talk to me about your testimony with uh, Mr. Sari. Did you rehearse that with him beforehand? 
No, we didn't rehearse it. I mean, did you I tell had, them what questions you were going to ask? Uh, no, we had. I had a list of questions that uh, that uh, I had been working on. And uh, did you share them with him before he appeared? No, I didn't. Did somebody else? I don't know. Well, did anybody else have the questions? Uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't do them independently, but I, they were questions that I had worked on with, with uh, House Counsel, with other folks. Did that look scripted to you? No. Okay. I mean, it was designed. I, I, I wanted to ask him questions that that help that would help dispel the um, you know these ancillary issues that were out floating around there. And the, the fact remains that that Norm did not have was not did not have a first-hand knowledge of a lot of this stuff, and he was not present with these with the staffers, and he wasn't present with with uh, Gamrat and Corson. So, if there was nothing there, why not allow the Democrats to also have? Questions of him. They did have questions. I mean, well, they, they were. There they were a couple were, that they wanted to ask that they couldn't. They were narrowly. Uh, they were narrowly focused and um, properly objected to. Do you think that? <laughs> with why, a, why, <laughs> why are you smiling? Because he's the one who objected. I, am, I was there. <laughs> Do you well, think that without these two in the house, that we might get a roads package done? Wow. Um, uh, I, I think that you still have a lot of that philosophical concern among uh, among some of our members that, uh, that they've they've taken pledges not to raise taxes or they're they're not at that point yet where where, ta where raising taxes is a is a last resort. Um, remember that you know Gamrat had not been in our caucus since I don't know when April, uh, April. and then of, and Corser was never in our caucus after since that. Then, yeah. So so really they were not a factor in terms of. Uh, rallying the troops one way or the other um, and and I suspect that when the governor calls a special election their replacements I'm, I'm confident are both going to be Republicans and they, they may end up being the new people may end up being just as uh, conservative let's put a ribbon on this what did you learn from all this uh, the the age-old story of political science it's not the scandal it's the cover-up thank you representative thanks yeah, good to see you